Alicia Vikander, Whoopi Goldberg, Sandra Bullock. What do these actors have in common? They all won Oscars for the wrong movie. Welcome to the top 10 actors who won Oscars for the wrong film. Here we go. Number 10, Leonardo DiCaprio. I thank you all for this amazing award tonight. Let us not take this planet for granted. I do not take tonight for granted. Thank you so very much. I think we're all pretty happy that DiCaprio has an Oscar by now. He won for The Revenant in 2016, but I think he should have won two years before that for The Wolf of Wall Street, a much better, richer performance that he tackles with total gusto. That, of course, was the year of Matthew McConaughey and Dallas Buyers Club, so it was going to be difficult for DiCaprio to beat McConaughey, but in the history of the Academy Awards, a win for The Wolf of Wall Street would have been better than The Revenant. I'm going to have Heidi lick some caviar off my balls in the meantime. Hey, you guys want to take some lobsters for your ride home? Number nine, Alicia Vikander. Thank you so much, the Academy, for this incredible recognition. Now, this one's really crazy because I prefer a performance from Vikander from the same year, 2015. She won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for The Danish Girl, but I think she's much better, more original, more exciting in Ex Machina from writer-director Alex Garland. That's the movie I would have nominated her for, and that's what I would have given her the Best Supporting Actress trophy for not the Danish girl. Well, you already know my name, and you can see that I'm a machine. Would you like to know how old I am? Number eight, Colin Firth. I have a feeling my career's just peaked. Um... <laughs> One of my favorite performances of the last 20 years is Colin Firth in A Single Man. That's a film that very much speaks to me as a gay person. I love him in that. And as much as I did like him in The King's Speech, it felt weird to me to have him just be nominated for a single man and then a year later win Best Actor for The King's Speech. I think the more nuanced portrayal, the more emotionally devastating turn for Firth is in A Single Man. Number seven, Whoopi Goldberg. I've wanted this. You don't know. <laughs> Now, this is not a performance I hate. I really like her in Ghost. That's a fun film, a fun role. She really eats up every second of screen time in that. But I do think the better performance that should have earned Goldberg the Academy Award was her turn in The Color Purple from 1985. That was the year Geraldine Page won Best Actress after having been nominated eight times, I believe. But I think in the long scope of Goldberg's career, her finest performance on film is in The Color Purple, and that's the film she should have won an Oscar for. Everything you've done to me, already done to you. Number six, Morgan Freeman. I want to thank everybody and anybody who ever had anything at all to do with the making of this picture. He gives a very good performance in Million Dollar Baby. That's not a bad win. He has a couple really iconic moments in that film. But if I had to give Morgan Freeman one Oscar, it would absolutely be for his turn in The Shawshank Redemption. That's his most famous role, his most famous movie, probably his best movie. And given that Tom Hanks had just won Best Actor the year before for Philadelphia, I do think a lot of voters going back to 1995 would have changed their vote from Tom Hanks for Forrest Gump to Morgan Freeman for The Shawshank Redemption. There's a harsh truth to face. No way I'm gonna make it on the outside. Number five, Sandra Bullock. Did I really earn this or did I just wear y'all down? Um. This to me is one of the most obvious ones. As a huge Sandra Bullock fan, I was kind of surprised she got as many award nominations and wins that she did for The Blind Side. She's of course very good in that film, but it's not necessarily an Oscar winning performance. Even to this day, it kind of baffles me that she won for that. And for me, it's really painful because I think by far her best performance on film is in Gravity, which she made four years after The Blind Side. She was never going to win for that because that was the year of Kate Blanchett and Blue Jasmine. But oh my God, is that an amazing performance she gives in Gravity. She basically has to carry the whole movie all by herself. And she does so with grace and emotion and it is easily her finest hour. Bullock should have won her Academy Award for Gravity. I know, we're all gonna die. Everybody knows that. 
but I'm gonna die today. Number four, Paul Newman. The winner is Paul Newman. He was one of the finest actors of his generation. He has so many great timeless performances and his Oscar win is for The Color of Money. Like that one has never sat well with me. That just felt to me like, oh, we have not given Paul Newman an Oscar for many decades. Let's just give him one this time around. It wasn't a very competitive year for Best Actor, but honestly, I think he should have won four years earlier for his dazzling dramatic performance in The Verdict. He's great in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. He's great in Nobody's Fool, The Hustler. But I think his best performance in the movies is in The Verdict, directed by Sidney Lumet. It's not The Color of Money. We need only to believe in ourselves and act with justice. Number three, Betty Davis. Congratulations, Betty. Thank you, Smith. Thank you. A lot of people were disappointed to not see Betty Davis in my top 10 greatest acting Oscar wins of all time video. I definitely wanted to include her, but I just don't think her Oscar wins for Dangerous or Jezebel are two of the all time greats. I would much rather Betty Davis had won Oscars for All About Eve and Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Those are her two classic roles and performances. And it feels weird to me that she won two Academy Awards, but they're not necessarily for her two greatest performances. All About Eve especially is just classic Betty Davis. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Number two, Al Pacino. I want to thank the Academy for giving us a gift of encouragement. And this is a gift, a great gift to me. This is kind of like Paul Newman in that in 1993, the Academy was like, we need to give Al Pacino an Oscar. It doesn't even matter what the movie is at this point. He was nominated twice in early 93 for both Glengarry Glenn Ross and Scent of a Woman. He won Best Actor for Scent of a Woman. Not a bad performance. It's an okay film and role for him. But I do think it's weird when you think about what did Al Pacino win his Academy Award for? And it's not Dog Day Afternoon, it's not Scarface, it's not either of the first two Godfather films, it's for Scent of a Woman. It's just kind of like, meh. I think his Oscar win should have been for The Godfather Part Two in early 1975. That, I think, would have been a better win than Art Carney for Harry and Tonto. Again, I'm happy Al Pacino has an Oscar, but it should have been for a different performance, namely one from the 1970s. My offer is this. Nothing. A few runners up, I would say George Clooney, who won Supporting Actor for Syriana. I would rather he had won Best Actor for Up in the Air or The Descendants. Julianne Moore for Still Alice. That just felt like, hey, we need to give Moore an Oscar. I don't really like that when it's just like, oh, they're overdue. Let's give her an Oscar for this. I mean, I like her performance in Still Alice, but that movie just hasn't really stood the test of time. I would have loved Julianne Moore to have won for Boogie Nights in early 1998. Jeff Bridges, I mean, his performance in Crazy Heart is fine. I would have rather he won for The Contender in early 2001, or better yet, how about The Big Lebowski, which he wasn't even nominated for. Reese Witherspoon, I would have much rather her won for Election. That to me is her finest performance on film. She's good in Walk the Line, but it's not very memorable. And Russell Crowe, I think his Oscar win should have been for A Beautiful Mind. It was so weird to me to see that film win Best Picture and Best Director and Best Supporting Actress and Best Adapted Screenplay, but Russell Crowe is really the greatest part of that movie. He should have won Best Actor for that film. And now finally, my choice for the number one actor who won an Oscar for the wrong movie is Kate Winslet. I'd like to thank some of the people along the way who had faith in me, um, my friends and my family, especially my mum and dad, who are in this room somewhere. Dad, whistle or something, because then I'll know where you are. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Kate Winslet is one of my all-time favorites. I love that she has an Oscar. But for the reader, I mean, it's fine. But for me, Winslet is at the top of my list because she should have won instead for Titanic or for Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind or for Little Children. Those are three amazing performances. 
and I would have much rather her won for either one of those three films than for The Reader, especially since she beat out Meryl Streep for Doubt. If Meryl Streep had rightfully won Best Actress for Doubt, then she doesn't win Best Actress for The Iron Lady three years later. It just would have been a better trajectory, I think. And I think I would have picked Winslet's win to be for Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That would have been an amazing all-timer. But what really puts Kate Winslet at the top of the list is that I actually prefer her performance in another movie that came out in 2008, Revolutionary Road, opposite Leonardo DiCaprio. I think what she accomplishes in Revolutionary Road is much more impressive than what she does in The Reader, and I think in the long scope of Academy history, I actually would have preferred Winslet to win Best Actress in early 2009 for Revolutionary Road instead of The Reader. And that's why Kate Winslet is my pick for the number one actor who won an Oscar for the wrong movie. Remember me. Try your best. Maybe we can.